Hello there, my fellow hardy raiders and reavers, and welcome back to our relatively new lore series about Norska and its inhabitants. Last time, I hopefully gave you a useful overview of what Norska is all about, as well as some of the early history of its settlers. Today, we're going to continue learning about these resilient people by talking a little about their tribes and their ruling caste. These will include their kings, their jarls, and their shamans. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them, shall we? The Norskans, as a single, cohesive nation, does not exist. Indeed, the very term Norskan is an imperial label. They are instead divided into various, numerous tribal confederations that are as much as war with each other as they are with the Kurgan and Hung tribes to the east, or the empire to the south. These various Norse tribes are often nations unto themselves, possessing varying degrees of gods, traditions, heroes, and dialects. The tribes living within the northern reaches of Norska are often fierce worshippers of chaos, and are the most common to take part in the chaos gods' wars upon the civilized world. The southern tribes are somewhat milder than their northern counterparts. While they do raid and plunder just as much as the rest of their kind, it is from these tribes that the ideals of trade and cooperation have begun to take root, albeit shakily. When not waging war against the southern realms, these tribes often trade exotic furs, metals, and their services as mercenaries to employers in cities such as Marienburg. However, all the Norse are united by a shared ancestry and a mutual veneration of the four Dark Lords of Chaos. And as such, when the gods speak and command war to be made against the Empire, the southern tribes take up the call as readily as their northern cousins. To refuse the call of the gods is the greatest dishonor a tribe can bring upon itself, and is often seen by other Norskans as grounds for annihilation. The nine so-called High Tribes of Norska, from which all the others descend, are the Acelings, the Greylings, the Vargs, the Sarls, the Bjornlings, the Skalings, the Bersonlings, the Hostlings, and the Kveligs. There's also many other lesser tribes comprising them, such as the Gorhunt, the Snager, the Sortvinear, the Iron Pelt, the Brennuns, the Crow Brothers, the Wolfclaw, the Storm Ravens, the Wormkin, the Beast Flayers, the Kin Slayers, the Black Axes, the Fjordlings, and so on and so forth. The tribe forms the very core of Norskan identity. A Norseman will never identify himself as such. He will instead identify himself based on his tribal lineage. For example, an Aceling will often think of himself as an Aceling, for their only loyalty is to their family, kinsmen, and to the Dark Gods. Being divided into countless tribal affiliations, there exist many important differences that marks each tribe as being unique, with particular customs and beliefs serving to set them apart from other men of their country. For instance, one particular clan of scalings may dress in cloaks of bearskin and reindeer hide, and paint over their steel armor with blood and grip mighty axes and spears in honor of corn. On the other hand, a tribe of acelings may be dressed in checkered surcoats and wear brass-studded collars, while wielding brutal long axes in honor of the same deity. Norskan warriors are thus as diverse as they are lethal. Norskan society is comprised of distinct tribes which venerate their ancestors and their respective visions of the chaos gods. Nevertheless, every tribe is stratified along similar social structures. The Norse tribes are each ruled by a king, who distributes hunting grounds and territory to their lords, also known as Jarls. The Jarls in turn bestow gifts and favor upon their sworn warriors, who are known as bondsmen. 
the warriors occupied the most vaunted and esteemed place in Norse society. Due to the warlike attitudes of the northern tribes and their insatiable lust for blood. The rest of Norsecan society consists of the elderly, though it is quite common for elder warriors to command huge respect among their fellow tribesmen due to their renown and experience in combat. Then come the infirm and the women. At the very bottom rung of Norsecan society lies the thrall. Slaves taken in raids for use as menial labor, as consorts, and even worse, as sacrifices to appease the dark hunger of the Chaos Gods. The most powerful and fearsome of the Norsemen are the Dark Kings of the Wild Land. Most kings begin their career as a Jarl, but they can occasionally inherit the title from a father. There is a divide in the methods of royal succession between the northern and southern parts of Norska. In the far north, kings are invariably victors of blood-drenched trials by combat, where all the claimants battle each other in order to determine who among them is the greatest warrior and the most favored by the dark gods. In the south, however, the transition of power is generally a bit smoother but still fraught with violence as the new king must still slay his rivals in combat to ensure his power and prove his worthiness before the gods and his kinsmen. All the kings of Norska bear upon them the marks of the dark gods, indicating outwardly that they have been blessed by their patron deity with incredible power and might. These marks are also an indication of the king's right to rule for he must have already proven himself as a legendary warlord in order to attract the eyes of the gods. Celebrated Chaos Champions, the Kings of Norska, are among the most deadly warriors in the entire world, and can prove the legends of their dark might in times of war again and again. At times, certain exceptionally powerful kings can rise to unite multiple tribes, or even the entirety of Norska under one banner. This individual is known as the High King. To date, there has been only a small number of individuals with the sheer strength of will and power to become High Kings, such as High King Ormagard, High King Valmir Aisling, and High King Eric Redax. The Jarl Jarls are powerful chieftains loyal to their tribal kings. In exchange for their oaths of fealty and friendship, the king grants the Jarls hunting grounds, warriors, thralls, and treasure. Jarls are the absolute masters of their lands, but are expected to be subservient to their king, who tends to punish disobedience with swift and terrible retribution. When the winds of war are blowing, a Jarl is bound by oath and honor to come to the aid of his king and lend his warriors to his cause. Should a king die without an heir to succeed him, the Jarls will invariably fight a savage contest to determine who shall succeed him. While it is expected that Jarls are utterly loyal to their monarchs, it is also expected that in times of weak leaders, that a strong Jarl will slay the weak lord and take the throne for himself. This is a risky act in the best of times, however for such a coup is likely to invite retribution from the king's followers, and especially his sons, who are expected to take brutal vengeance upon their father's murderer. Many Jarls tend to be chaos champions of a certain kind, being often afflicted by mutations and enhancements, showing that they have the favor of the dark gods. Though they are generally not as individually mighty as their kings, the Jarls are nevertheless terrifying forces on the battlefield. There also exist among the Jarls highly powerful and exceptional individuals known as High Jarls, powerful champions and warlords who rule over large and powerful cities of the north. They can command massive armies, able to bring to bear thousands of warriors and savage creatures called from the darkest nightmare. Only one such High Jarl is known, Egil Styrbjorn, champion of Korn and High Jarl of the scaling city of Strovengard. The Seers and the Shamans The holy men of Norsecan society are the Seers, also known as Vitki. 
Admittedly, many of these shamanistic spellcasters are in actuality chaos sorcerers, who draw upon the power of the dark gods to fuel their divination. These priests are often the advisors of the mighty Norse chieftains and wield great authority over the tribe, due to their status as the mouthpiece of the dark gods. With but a word, a Vitki can order the death of almost any man. Thralls die brutally by the score in order to seal the demonic pacts and empower foul rituals by which they draw upon the power of chaos. Steeped in the arcane traditions of the ruinous powers, it falls to these privileged men and women to interpret the movements of the winds of chaos, the whispers of demons and the spirits of fallen warriors, so they can guide the Jarl to choose the proper path of the tribe, typically one of blood, glory and conquest. Among the many, many Norse clans who are dedicated solely to the bloody-minded worship of corn, another tradition of divination exists. One that abides by the strength of steel rather than the adult whispers of sorcerers. These are the terrible blood fathers. These warlike holy men are solitary by nature, and many deign to attend to the shrines and holy places of corn in isolation. They are rightly considered legendary among the northern tribes, for many among them bear the mark of corn, a sign of their lord's high favor. Furthermore, it is whispered among the Norsemen that such is their strength and skill that no man alive can best a bloodfather of corn in battle, for there is no trick of axe or sword that the blood god has not revealed to them. The dreams of the Blood Fathers touch ever so with the sanguine realm of corn, granting them visions of scarlet yesterdays and crimson tomorrows, visions of battle that allow them to advise their chieftains to the path of corn's favor. The Blood Fathers of Norska often boast that the divining cantrips of sorcerers is like nothing compared to the visions granted by a god. Norskans observe various customs and rituals before battle, done in order to prepare themselves for the fight and to gain the favor of the dark gods. The bloody sacrifice of a thrall to the great powers is a very common practice, but it is by no means the only one. Most battle customs involve terrifying and complex rites, such as the symbolic spilling of blood, consuming the flesh of chaos, and even ritual combat between two warriors. In some tribes, there exists a horrific ritual to consume the power of chaos. First, they take a living beast man, drain all its blood into an iron cauldron brought to a boil, and then add various hallucinogenic substances and herbs into the repulsive fluid. Next, the warriors drop locks of their hair into the concoction. Once all of the warband have contributed, the sorcerer hands around a skull filled with the liquid. Every warrior drinks from the skull down to the dregs, believing that ingesting this liquid will allow them to receive visions from their gods. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the tribes and ruling castes of the Norse guns. There's definitely a lot more to be said in this department, and if you guys enjoyed this episode, the next one is gonna be about their warrior cast, the Carls, the Thralls, and maybe more. What are your thoughts about the practices of the Norskans and their ways? Would the life of such a warrior appeal to you, or would you rather stay comfy and warm in your house in Altdorf? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.